Today, debt, divorce and death. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian and New Zealand perspective. And today I'm joined again by property expert Joe Wilkes. Hello, Joe. Good to see you again. Hi, Martin. How are you today? Yeah, pretty good. How's the battle over there? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, weather's, weather's good. Um, sun's shining. Um, various bits and pieces happening in the in the market. So, um, yeah, I just thought we'd... Um, I thought we'd take a different tack today. We've done done a bit of data the last couple of um, posts, and I thought we'd just talk from uh, a real estate perspective today. Um, this is, uh, I guess, uh, a market that I was involved in for almost 20 years, and, and very much at that time was on the front line. Um, and um, a change in the credit environment and a falling market uh, on both sides of the ditch um, does uh, change... Uh, I guess the uh, the, the uh, availability of houses that estate agents actually have to sell. So I just sort of touch on this today. It's a bit of a, a gloomy headline, but it, it's not really a gloomy post. I um, just wanted to uh, to run through uh, what happens as a market contracts um, and where agents uh, can start to focus their attentions to make sure that they they continue to do business in a in a market that well the pie pie is going to get smaller. Okay, yeah, and it's worth saying, I think Edwin uh, was commenting on this a few weeks ago in one of his posts, I might put a cross link to that too, because uh, obviously he knows the Australian perspective. And I, made, I know one of the points he made was, remember that real estate agencies are relatively small and medium ent enterprise businesses, right? So effectively, they live or die by what they do. Exactly, and uh, many of them are run as franchises over here. There's a few uh, bigger independent companies, but a lot of them are run as franchises, and a lot of uh, an awful lot of salespeople. I mean, we've got um, around fifteen thousand registered uh, or licensed real estate agents operating in New Zealand. Uh, the transaction volumes have, have dropped off. So last year there were seventy-two thousand transactions nationally. Um, in Auckland, they're well off their peak transactions. So. 2015-16 transactions are running at 29,000 transactions a year and those have dropped now to around 22,000 last year and there's no sign that they're going to be higher this year. I think they're going to drop off again um, the first three months uh, already playing into that we, we could see a similar contraction. So the state agents and, and, and this is, I, I do, I do, um, you know, I have a lot of interest in this because I've, I've got a consultancy. I, I deal with a number of firms already. Uh, in Australia and New Zealand, where I look at, okay, how can they focus the businesses, get their structures and processes in place so that they can target, dare I say, what is business and what isn't business? Um, the the title of this of this post, uh, debt, divorce, and um, and death. Um, sadly, uh, in a marketplace that shrinks, uh, what you'll find is that there's an awful lot of competition for those those um, potential potential customers. Because those are people who have a genuine need to move. Um, if you don't, if you passed on, unfortunately, you don't have a need for your house anymore. Um, if you're getting divorced, there's a pressure, and it's very complicated business because you've often got two two parts of, of a transaction where both need to be appeased and managed through the process. Um, and the debt, well, uh, well, <laughs> that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, people will lose jobs. Um, they'll have to trade out of positions, and if they've over leveraged in the good times they'll be looking at, at trading down. Um, another reflection I think that we all need to make is the, uh, the way the advertising's changed, um, particularly with the, this theme today of, of the debt, divorce and um, uh, uh, debt. The uh, Westpac advert that has recently been aired in, in Australia, I think is quite interesting, quite telling. Uh, no reference to the fact that they may have caused a relationship breakup, but um, I'd like people to have a little look at this and uh, yeah, let us know what your thoughts are. Beautiful day. Haven't been down here in a while. Yeah, it's so good to have a dishwasher, thank you. Milk? Careful. Oh, 
club is here. So you're still picking up Ari from cricket? Oh, right. What, is that going to be a problem? No, 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 of course not. Well, I've been afraid of changing Cause I Um, and just to sort of put a little focus on this, um, you, if you look at Auckland as a, as a micro example of a market, uh, I'm not going to go nationally, but Auckland, there are around half a million houses um, or rooftops, as, as we used to call it in, in, in our business. Now, 2016, evidently the peak of the market. We looked at our posts the other day um, uh, on what's happening at the top end of the market, and we looked at Remuera, and you can see there's an awful lot of properties. I think we, we came to about 36%, both on the sales side and the rental side, that have been bought from 2013 onwards, so near peak of market. Now, when you consider that over a 30-year term of a mortgage, most people have only paid back about 10% of the capital after a five-year period, there's a lot of people there who just won't have the equity to trade now that prices are prices are starting to fall. So if you put that into perspective, last year, 22,000 houses sold in Auckland. The year before, 27,000. I think the year before that, 29,000. You've got um, early early 60,000s there out of a rooftop pool of 50,000 who may actually struggle to have the equity to make another trade. Um, if they're trading up, it's going to be difficult if they're trading down. They'll either be well, they could possibly be trading down at a, at a loss on their on their previous purchase. So, five hundred thousand rooftops all of a sudden becomes four hundred and forty thousand possibilities for a real estate agent, and, and there are an awful lot of them to try and get and an, an, earn a living from. Um, I just did some cursory numbers, and you know, if we had seventy two thousand sales last year. You're looking at about 4.6, 4.7 sales per realtor um, across the whole of New Zealand. So um, incomes are going to be tight already, and, and, and they're going to get tighter. So um, what, I, what I wanted to do today is just talk about a little bit of advice that, okay, the market's shrinking. It will provide some support at a point for uh, uh, the market to, uh, to stabilize for a period of time, depending on what happens with the, the credit environment. But what you, what you are going to find is that there's going to be an increasing amount of competition between the agents to get those listings that can sell. Um, from, from, from an old perspective and, and from working through this all the way through from 2007 to 2017 in the UK, um, your businesses have got to make sure that those, those listings that are going to sell, the debt, divorce and, and, um, and death, you've got to get those onto your, onto your company's register. Um, and if that means being a little bit competitive on your fee offering um, or tweaking things and offering certain things for free, if it's about offering advertising for free, um, then whatever you do, just make sure that you get the ones that are definitely going to be sold. Um, talking about the Australian perspective, um, you've, you're going to have huge numbers of people who will have bought probably from 2014 onwards in a very, very loose credit environment um, where Probably today, if they went to back to the bank to go and ask for a loan, uh, they'd be unable to buy the house that they purchased at the purchase price that they agreed to, to, to buy it for four, five, six years ago. So again, those people, not saying that they're going to be forced to sell, some of them will just have to hunker down, pay down their, pay down their debts and, 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 and look at uh, how, they can, how they can work the situation. But agents are going to get, have, to, have to get very, very creative about, okay, how am I going to be advising my client here? They've got a debt issue. Um, what are the best options for them? How, you know, do do we do we look at okay? Well, you're going to have to you know have some hard conversations. You're going to have to look at a different suburb. You may have to look at downsizing. Um, the divorce side of things really really complicated. But just from a uh, from a market perspective, and this is this is a supporting factor for those lower end properties. Divorce, sadly, in, in my experience, um, often came as a result of um, husband and wife not spending enough time with each other. Something's gone wrong. Um, but very often, the, 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 the root cause of, of the, the need to move um, or the, you know, the, the separation, the root cause was actually a, a pressure because of household debt and household finances. People don't spend time with each other when they're constantly working and juggling. And, um, and then you get those niggles that 
uh, just you know blow up somebody you know somebody makes a bad choice and then as a result you've got um you've got a house on the market so those those people who are trading out of, of the big mortgages on the, the bigger houses, and there will be lots of them, uh, and, and, and they'll be separating, sadly, there will be equity in many cases for a purchase, but often you'll find that it will be a purchase in the middle middle market. So all those baby boomers that we talked about wanting to downsize, they're going to be competing probably with some separations into that lower end market where um, things are, are affordable and people just have to have something to put roof over the kids' heads. So um, it's, it's going to be some, some, uh, some interesting times there. Um, but the, the focus that the businesses are going to have is, is going to have to be on um, the, the systems and processes and really getting under the skin of, of what their clients' needs are, um, what's driving the move. Um, I think we're seeing uh, this last few days has been a drop off in the availability of property in Auckland. So those numbers that we talked about, 14,600, I think they've dropped back a bit over the last week or so. Now, some of that, I think, is um, those speculative sellers who were, I'll give it a go in the new year, see if there's a wonderful price out there. Um, and if there is a wonderful price, I'll, I'll take it. If there's not a wonderful price... I'll wait the three months of my trade me and, and advertising costs, and I'll take it off the market. In a real estate business, um, those clients, dare I say, <laughs> they're, they're, they're bad business. Um, they're, they're after a price that's, that's not achievable. Um, many agents are so desperate to get a listing because they haven't sold anything, and they're only selling 4.67 houses on average each a, a year. Uh, they're so desperate to get a listing that they're putting any old crap onto the market wasting their time at open homes, wasting their time talking to buyers and sellers, wasting their time primarily because they haven't focused on getting their client onto the market at a price because it's through having a price that buyers can judge but also so that sellers can judge. And you can gauge how serious your seller is. If your seller's on at a price for six weeks and they haven't taken a, uh, you know, haven't had a bid, then the reality is that for those six weeks, they're likely to have been overpriced in the current market conditions. So, as an agent, you're, you know, you have options. You can take new photographs and you can go and get a house dress around. And largely those things are basically there's extra cost for the client. They're a good test of whether your client's serious. Um, but I would say that the biggest conversation is sitting there back in their living rooms and demonstrating to them what has sold, why it's sold, and why theirs hasn't. Um, and normally, well, 95% of the time it is, is a pricing issue. Yeah, it's interesting because, again, Edwin was talking the other day. He was answering a question um, from um, a viewer saying, how do you know what the right price is, right, because you can't really take the uh, publicly available data, right, because that's very old and uh, will obviously be averaged. <clears throat> and uh, quite often um, his perspective was the same, that, uh, you know, often prices are just completely unrealistic and everybody's just running around in circles with no potential sales coming off the back of it. Uh, it just it means you're just running ever faster but without any outcome for anybody exactly and and the individual realtors are taking on board those costs so they're paying for the petrol money they're paying for the phones they're paying for you know that, the, the license to operate um the i don't know how to go the, the challenge that you have in in australasia is the model um the model has you know it may have an office where there are 30 people working as independent contractors under a brand now that model works it doesn't work in in the interest of um uh, i suppose transparency of information and that sharing of data so you know for example i, I might be on the uh, on the books with a, a specific brand in in the location that i'm, I'm living in um, i might have gone and seen five open homes from five different people and as a result you're getting five different connection points where those connection points are uh, unaware of conversations that other other people within their office have had there doesn't seem to me to be the same regulation of, of the business where um, every conversation has to get recorded. So much of it's done on mobile phones here that the the, the data, central data recorded by the um, by the agents. I mean, I, I spoke to a, 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 a friend of mine the other day who, well, they, they, they came to me because obviously I've been in the business for a long time and they had a complaint about an agent, weren't sure how to go about it because they viewed a house in July last year that was on the market at the time at 875,000. They'd said to the agent uh, who they'd met at the property that they didn't think it was worth 875,000, uh, but would be prepared to pay 800. Now, 
that conversation was ha had with the agent in that office that they'd met several times before and they'd liked, so they'd gone and, and had these conversations with that agent. Three months down the line, the house sells. Um, it just disappears. Um, and uh, in January, this friend of mine realized or, or came to understand that the house had actually sold for 780000 So he suggested he hadn't tabled a formal offer. And the reason he hadn't do it is because he'd been discouraged by the person that he was talking to. Um, the house actually sold for $20,000 less than he would have been prepared to pay. And the reason that happened is because someone else in the office had a conversation with a diff different client, unaware of, of what my friend had been saying to this other agent, and it's cost the client 20 grand because they could have had 20 grand three months earlier. Now, maybe that client needed to go on the journey of being on the market. Thank you know, They were sensible enough to put a price on the house. They obviously had an experience of three months where that price didn't happen. But what didn't happen was the follow-up because there's no central record of the conversations that everybody is having. Now, these things are going to cost clients money um, and they're going to cost house sellers money unless there is a serious look by the, the, um, the, the real estate regulators about how systems are operated within, within brands. Another challenge you have is, and this is why there are in, in Australia and New Zealand so many houses that, that come up priced by negotiation, for sale by tender. Um, I don't. I don't have an issue with with for sale by tender. If, you know, if a, if a house goes to tender, people put in their bids. It's fine. In a rising market where you've got twenty buyers for every house, you'll establish a price. In a market that's correcting, where people are sitting on the fence, and you might just get one person come forward, uh, not having a price uh, really does leave you out for for the bargain hunters rather than the um, you know the, the genuine bona fide sellers who just want to know how much it's going to cost them we're, we're in a we're in a world now in australia and new zealand where people want to know how much something's going to cost them um they don't want this this guesswork nobody knows where the economy is going so they want to know exactly what the price is um so there the, there needs to be some structural change um the, the challenge is there's so many people doing it part-time so you've got a lot of people who, you know, they get two or three listings a year, um, which they don't put on with a price. They have no idea because, you know, there I say, it seems to attract um, down in Australia and New Zealand that the business seems to attract a lot of people who they, they get into the business. And, and this is nothing against how old people are when they when they enter an industry, but they get into the business nearing retirement. And um, they've, they've actually many of them have already done their hard work. Um, this is a bit filled to fit in around playing golf three times a week and um, and, and making making sure that you you know you're out having your coffee mornings and you're playing croquet and bowls. So what happens is that they get two or three listings a year. They have no idea what's going on in the wider market because they're not that fussed. They only need to sell three listings a year to supplement their retirement. The professional agents they will be every morning they'll be looking at the area that they're operating in and they will see and they'll be tracking how many houses are up for sale, what's come on overnight, what prices have things come on over overnight for. Each month they'll be looking at how many houses have sold in their area, what the prices were, and they will actually themselves be attending other properties, probably other open homes um, that are listed with other agents, so they get a really clear understanding of, okay, what's been offered in the market, so that when I'm talking to, to three people that have asked me to provide a market appraisal next week, I can go out to them and say, well, these are the things that you're competing with, and I've seen them all. So the market needs, the, the industry needs to become more, more professional. Um, and I've, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, like I said, set up consultancy. I'm dealing with a few firms in New Zealand now. I've um, got a couple of clients in Australia, and um, we, the better businesses, will really focus on their systems and their processes and their people, so that they are able to capitalise in a. In a, in a market that, that shrinks. This isn't a bad market. A good agent, and my business in the UK, we, we saw the market contract from 2007. It never recovered in volume terms. Um, volumes actually pretty much stayed 20 to 30% lower than, than peak volumes. But what we were able to do is grow our market share up to close to 50%. So um, lots of things to think on. This is just a small snippet. I've got loads that I can share with, with individual real, realtors. And, and what I'd say is, you know, if you are a principal of a business, get in touch um, and I'll see if I can help you. Sounds as though it's about the survival of the fittest, Joe. So probably a smaller number of fitter, stronger businesses ultimately.
Yep, and uh, just uh, focusing back on the title, the people that really need to move are really important to focus on. Joe, thanks for that. Very interesting. Appreciate it, Martin. So very interesting observations there from Joe, specifically as to which part of the markets are still going to maintain some momentum, even if other people are perhaps less likely to buy. Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.